There are a lot of things that can harm your data, your workloads, and as a cloud advocate or a DevOps engineer, or even as a InfoSec or cloud security engineer, you need to make sure that you are taking advantage of all the different strategies that are out there. So I'm Demetrius and I'm a cloud advocate here at Veritas. And I wanna introduce you to a topic that I call proactive resiliency and building a proactive resiliency approach around protecting your data. So why do you need to protect your data? Obviously you need to protect your data against numerous bad things that can happen to your data uh, even from a human error perspective or accidental deletion perspective as well. Also, there are attacks on your data, malware, ransomware attacks, internal threats, external threats as well. And the old fashioned way, uh, good old mother nature, that's also disaster, some type of disaster that happens to your data whether it's a, a fire, flood, earthquake, hurricane, etc. And how will you go about making sure that your team is working together and not in silos to move toward a proactive resiliency approach to protecting your workloads and your application data? So it all starts within the IT team. And as I mentioned earlier, the IT team, I'm specifically talking about the cloud advocate the DevOps, and also cloud security teams as well, to make sure that those teams are working together in order to implement a zero trust approach to protecting all the data and workloads in the environment because they're also responsible for reporting up to the C-level executives. So this would be your, your CIOs, your CEOs, and also your CISOs. And then at a level above that, they are responsible for reporting out to the board of directors to cover all the different plans and processes in place to make sure that they are covered in case something like ransomware happens to attack the business. So there are a few different strategies within a proactive resiliency approach. And one strategy that's, it's pretty old, but it's effective and it's called RTO or recovery time objective. And the recovery time objective deals with the amount of time it takes to bring that environment back on back online. How often will you uh, take those backups in order to bring that environment back up or that business application? Also, the RPO or recovery time objective is dealing with how much data are you willing to lose? So that also ties into the RPO, how often should you be taking those backups in order to make sure that you can bring that data back online, bring that business application back online as well. Another one is maximum tolerable downtime. And I like to say that this one is the money, the money card. So dealing with how much money can you afford to lose if the business was down or that application was down, that mission critical application was down and you're losing money by the minute. And also there's money associated with recovery time objectives and recovery point objectives. Of, of course, the more aggressive they are, the more cost is associated with making sure that that technology is implemented and appropriate to deliver the appropriate recovery time and recovery point objectives as well. So as you are implementing the technology within your data protection strategy, moving toward proactive resiliency, and you're storing data in the cloud, and it doesn't matter if it's AWS, if it's Google, or if it's Microsoft, those workloads still need to be protected, whether they're SaaS applications also, because you still have some type of compute, you have storage, and you also have network that that data is going to flow over as well. Data sitting on-prem, make sure that that data is also protected as well and included within your proactive resiliency approach. So zero, zero trust principles are super critical and super important to implementing things such as multi-factor authentication, also having role-based access control, 
uh, using things like encryption, uh, whether that data is uh, in transit or at rest, and to also make sure that that storage or your target where you're sending that data is also uh, immutable, indelible, and also it's isolated. You have an isolated recovery environment where you can recover that data due to a ransomware attack and that data is in pristine, um, pristine format for you to recover appropriately. And as you are continuing to build out the proactive resiliency approach, keep in mind that you have to also comply with government regulations and laws. And as you're doing that, it depends on whether you are in the healthcare industry and you have to comply with things like HIPAA, or you are in the financial services industry and you have to comply with things like SEC 17-A or even PCI DSS or also maybe even GDPR or CCPA and then there's a, a long list of other regulations that you do have to comply with. So just to wrap up here, work together as a team, remove all of the silos, the IT team should be working with the InfoSec, InfoSec team. That information should, should be strategized and planned out with the C-level executives all the way up to the board. And implementing strategies such as RTO, RPO, MTD, and not to forget the 321 protocol. Making sure that you have multiple copies, at least three different copies in three different locations. That could be availability zones that could be regions and on two different types of media and making sure one that is stored off site somewhere else. So this is what I call a proactive resiliency approach. Please stay tuned as we roll out more videos, hit that like button. If you, um, I guess gain some takeaways from this video, subscribe as well, because like I said, we will be rolling out more videos and also leave us a comment to let us know if there is a topic that you would like to hear us go in depth on in the future. So thanks once again, and I'm super excited to continue on this Lightboard video session for you.